there are you know a couple of billion people in this world uh, who have absolutely no electricity whatsoever uh, and they're kind of trapped in poverty and with our technology the microgrid technology we can leapfrog if you will a lot of these problems and hurdles and make electricity more available at the right price for everyone welcome to hadera hashgraphs gossip about gossip i'm daniel francis i'm ken anderson and i'm paul madsen if you are a developer an entrepreneur crypto enthusiast or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and hadera hashgraph will impact your industry then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up bookmark us add us to your podcast app and stay tuned Hey there, I'm Paul Madsen, and welcome to Hedera Hashgraph Gossip About Gossip. I'm joined today by Jiro Olcott, who is a director at Guard Global, a company building on Hedera. Welcome, Jiro. Thank you very much. It's always a great pleasure to be you know, talking with the team. So my, my fundamental goal for this episode is, is to answer the question, where and what is Corby, and why should people care about it in the UK? Okay. Right. We'll, we'll get to that. So Guard Global, what problem are you solving? Well, we're uh, essentially a software um, development firm. We've been going for about 10 years. We do essentially different types of financial and non-financial reporting. Recently, what we've got into is the monitoring and management of renewable energy in the form of a microgrid we've developed. And we're just uh, in the testing phase now. This is a project that has been sponsored by the UK government and some uh, private funding as well. And to achieve that, actually, we created an entity called Power Transition, which is the sort of microgrid development uh, company. So we do pretty much end-to-end software, hardware, and then the business development uh, that goes with it. So I, I was watching your Hedera 18 session, and a, and a line that stuck out for me was, uh, if I recall, the democratization of energy. Is that microgrid value proposition? Yeah, absolutely. At the moment, I think that everyone understands that electricity, I think that we have this unquenchable thirst uh, for electricity in, in modern society. It's essentially controlled by very large sort of power organizations, uh, power plants, national grids, etc., uh, on fairly sort of old traditional architectures. Really, it's costing the consumer you know, a huge amount of money to, you know, consume electricity, plus the fact that there are, you know, a couple of billion people in this world uh, who have absolutely no electricity whatsoever, and they're kind of trapped in poverty. And with our technology, the microgrid technology, we can leapfrog, if you will, a lot of these problems and hurdles and make electricity more available at the right price for everyone. And thus include a lot of the people who are trapped in poverty into sort of the modern world. What, what then is the proposition? I, as a homeowner, generate my own electricity, solar panels or equivalent? Well, yeah, that's the initial step for homeowners, the prosumers and consumers to generate their own electricity. But it's also being able to store and optimize its use. So using it at the home at the most efficient cost and sort of energy cycling uh, modes, but also being able to share it with the community so that you have like an aggregate price uh, for a microgrid community, which is a lot lower than, you know, individuals feeding off the national grid. So sharing with the community implies some sort of marketplace, right? Where the community can find my electricity and perhaps bid on it? Absolutely. We have several different ways of doing it. I think a lot of people from our experience become a bit overwhelmed when they have to bid and uh, trade their own energy. So we actually have sort of like an optimized button, just you know, give me the best deal button type thing, which actually works very well. But you know, some people like to juggle around and optimize their own lifestyles, and that functionality is available for them as well. So that as the platform becomes more and more sophisticated, people will be able to buy and sell energy at more exotic means. 
Yeah, I, I know people that would be very interested in managing every kilobyte sold. So that's the problem. And Guard Global, was it Power Transition is the company that's building out this microgrid? Yeah, that's right. Guard Global do all of the software development, principally on at the Hedera uh, Hashgraph platform. But as you said, the Power Transition is the company that does the actual microgrid itself. Is it time to talk about Corby? Yep, we can talk about Corby anytime. <laughs> I came across Corby, a website, Corby Power, and I, I wasn't sure if it was the company, but I, I dug in deeper and it, it's something more than a, than a company. So please explain. Well, uh, there is several entities involved here. There is Electric Corby that's sort of coordinating the entire project from the very large community level in Corby. In fact, it's in, it's in Northamptonshire. The entire sort of borough of Corby is interested in this renewable energy and microgrid technology. So it's not just us going in there and doing a small amount of work. It's actually the whole community getting involved, uh, which is very encouraging, especially now in the United Kingdom, where we're going through such enormous changes in you know energy use, uh, energy procurement from different countries, Brexit, and all that sort of wonderful stuff. It falls at a very good time. And the people in Corby do have a very kind of progressive attitude towards this, uh, which is very encouraging. That sounds incredible. And as you indicated, it, it's not just people living in Corby, first world countries like the UK, but it's also people who are currently disconnected from any grid. And this would give them both the means to power their own homes, but also presumably a source of revenue by selling that back to others. Absolutely right. And uh, in fact, if you take an extreme example, uh, is a project we're working on. If you take a sub-Saharan community, you know, these people have never had electricity before in their lives, in fact, and they're too remote and insignificant to all intents and purposes for the local governments to actually put in, you know, the pylons and transformers and all that infrastructure, which is actually very expensive. Uh, and so we can leapfrog all of that by taking, in fact, it's all, it's a container kit uh, and the container arrives, we erect a, a telecom tower and we work uh, in league with our telecom providers and the telecom tower itself, I mean, it's, it could be a fairly simple thing, is solar powered, which is good because, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, they have very good, you know, solar power. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's silly to waste it, of course. And once that happens, then the entire community, of course, immediately gets connected to the internet and the, all of the Hedera network as well. And then from that point, we can uh, extend the microgrid from the telecom tower across the entire community so that they can use our software, our microgrid software, and generate and tokenize electricity through additional solar panels that they put onto their homes, in fields, or perhaps even wind is another source of renewable electricity. And then they can have a community network of electricity and be able to provide, you know, like schools with electricity, maybe a medical clinic, certain types of uh, workshops that, you know, require a little bit of electricity, etc. All these things can be done. And it can be done in a way where people are buying and selling electricity among themselves. And of course, all of this has to be reported. Local governments require some sort of, you know, tax declarations, etc. But also the people who in originally invested into this community project need to be reported improvements in, in, in health, education, in productivity, creating like a microeconomy in this community who's normally kind of trapped in poverty. The Hedera network itself, um, we'd like to be able to, and we're working on a D app for that, to do the microfinancing um, for these projects. So in other words, you and I, as long as we have Hedera wallets, uh, we can contribute small amounts to these type of projects, uh, which can you know, microfinance these remote communities to get connected up to electricity. What a powerful idea. You know, all bootstrap from that container dropped off in sub-Saharan uh, Africa. You might need a different model here in Canada where, where sunlight is, is not so reliable. 
So a couple of points you made answer the question I was about to ask. Why a blockchain? Why a DLT? Irrespective of Hedera or otherwise, why couldn't you build this on AWS? that database, that marketplace of buyers and sellers? We could, of course, but the level of effort required to create something like that and the amount of resources, the amount of energy and the effort to run it really becomes non-commercial, plus the fact that there are security issues uh, involved as well. And I think that using DLT technology eliminates a lot of these problems and you have this DLT infrastructure, which is basically yeah, like a global mesh network. And on top of that, you can quickly build the applications you need so that you're focusing much more early on and more precisely on the business framework that you need, rather than worrying about all those little bits and pieces that you would normally have to think of otherwise. Yeah. Another consideration, as I, as I heard you describe it, if you've ever heard Lehman talk, Lehman Baird, inventor of Hashgraph, the original vision he had, and it's manifests in the name of the company Swirls, was small permissioned ledgers, some small number of people, not millions on a public network, but tens or, or hundreds. And that scenario you described of some small village in Africa made me think of that and made me think that maybe a, a permission deployment of Swirls and Hashgraph could be a good fit rather than or in addition to Hedera. But then you talked about the implications or the requirements for reporting to local governments and you know microfinancing. And then that started to make clear why you'd want a, a bigger network, a public network like Hedera. No, absolutely true. And in fact, when I say Hedera, I kind of like, you know, talk about everything. But to be precise, like you say, um, we actually work and enjoy working with the Hedera network. And we're, you know, currently working on uh, testnet and mainnet, as well as Swirl. So we are an integrated, interconnected private and public network application. That's awesome. I, I wasn't aware of that. That's, that's powerful. Yeah. It works so well. With Hedera, I'm just like amazed, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's been a, a journey of discovery for us, but as we go forward, we just keep tripping over the answers as we look for them. And it all just fits so well with the Swirls and Hedera. So, you know, we do have, you know, we have peer to peer energy trading, uh, we have a mass tokenization of energy from various sources like you know you have these big wind farms you have solar farms hydroelectric plants all that energy needs to be tokenized there has to be transmission there has to be storage in various uh, shapes and sizes then there has to be consumption and each little piece of energy each little kilowatt hour needs to be accounted for right from the very beginning where it comes from when it when it was generated and how long it was stored and when it was consumed and where it was consumed. All these things need to be very carefully monitored and accounted for uh, in, a, in a traceable uh, manner. And, you know, this is where it all fits in. And then going back to this public network, we do a lot of our own reporting. We have user accounts, some KYC. Each member of the microgrid needs to put in their specifications, their equipment, and we need to keep track of that. A lot of this is done through the Swirls network because it doesn't have to be external and you don't have the transition costs, et cetera, as well. And then we have all of the peer-to-peer -peer and the trading and stuff like that, uh, which will happen on uh, the Hedera mainnet. Each little private network has its fun functionality and each you know, public net application has its functionality as well. And the, and the two work collaboratively very well. That's great to hear, right? That, that you've you know, discovered what I think the rest of the industry is discovering is that hybrid model is powerful, whether it's a centralized application on Amazon calling out to a public network for time stamping or a private ledger, whether Hyperledger or a Swirls based, Hashcraft based, using a public network for settlement and sort of the broader trust model. It's great to hear. There are many microgrids out there and each one has its own little flavor. And 
as you say, what we want to do is to be able to integrate all of those in a big public network. That's where microgrid technologies becomes very, very powerful. And Hedera is very well positioned to become like, you know, the pack horse of the microgrid industry, as far as I can say. So the, the, the granularity of management and monitoring that you indicated, one kilowatt hour or whatever the number was, does that hint at the sorts of performance requirements that led you to Hedera? Yes, absolutely. As you can imagine, when you have you know multiple microgrids working together, there's a huge volume of data being produced. And so we definitely do need a, a DLT platform that can handle this level of transactions. I mean, I've done quite a lot of research, uh, and there's only one that can manage that at the moment. <laughs> good to hear. Good to hear. And I guess proof of work and its sort of explicit wastefulness by design is somewhat contradictory to the idea of uh, making efficient use of electricity and empowering the world. Are there other features of Hedera that are particularly useful for the use case? Yeah, definitely. You know, there has been in the past sort of like a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, a defensive knee-jerk reaction among governments and large international organizations, you know, when these cryptocurrencies and DLTs came around. And so a conservative approach is good. And so the things that, you know, we look at stability, this forking issue that uh, some of these proof-of-work blockchain platforms have to deal with uh, is definitely not desirable whatsoever. Governance and decentralized governance I think is very important as well because people in in the sort of blockchain space, you know, they have these huge sort of ASIC, these specialized pieces of hardware that do the mining work plugged into these coal-powered power stations in China and stuff. You know, that's definitely not decentralized uh, governance whatsoever. And then, you know, we need to deal with, you know, regulatory authorities, tax authorities, government agencies, and we need to report to them in a way that they want to be reported in a structured sort of data way. All of this is available with um, Hedera, actually, uh, which, you know, fits in very nicely with our business model. It's gratifying to hear someone building a DAP, such as Power Transition, that acknowledges the role of regulation and doesn't doesn't run from it right but acknowledges that it's that it's there and uh, dlts are not uh, remote or external to that world exactly jiro thank you very much a, a fascinating use case lots of dapps whether on hedera or otherwise are building better games or or more interesting ways to move money it's it's great to talk to somebody who's building something you know that arguably could change the world. So thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's, it's, it's not just the work I, I feel that it, that's important uh, in terms of you know, the environment and society, but just working with the Hedera community together, it's a great adventure. It's a great pleasure. Indeed. Thanks, Jira. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph, particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.